My name is Mark, and today I'm going to talk about a topic um, that's quite strange, and um, it's the theory is called simulation theory. And our topic we're going to explore today is real or not. Right? Wait, where's my clicker? Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Julia. Clicker. <laughs> real or not, we're back. Okay. So. Before anything, let me take you through a... Okay, this doesn't work. <laughs> okay. okay, so let's look at this painting. So this paint, so it was painted around like 300 BC. Well, it's painted for a guy that's 300 BC. His name is Zhuang Zi, and he once had a dream that he was a butterfly. Right? And he woke up and he asked the question, Hmm, am I now a human dreaming that I'm a butterfly, or am I a butterfly dreaming that I'm a human? So, that, that is exactly, precisely the topic that we're going to explore today. So, we're going we're gonna to ask ourselves the question, how do you know what you see is real? How do you know that your interpret, interpret, interpretation is reality? So, First question, are, we, are you real? Well, quite frankly, this is a question that's very hard to, a, hard to answer. Like, how do I know if I'm real? Well, I mean, like, I'm physical, I'm standing here, I feel like I'm real, but just like when you're dreaming, unless you're a lucid dreamer, right? you feel like it's real. You're, you're, you're dreaming about something like last night, I was dreaming that I was in Salt Lake, Salt Lake City or something, I was like, doing something there. But, but when I was dreaming, I didn't know what was real or not, right? So. And with the emergence of technology, with stronger and stronger GPUs, stronger and stronger computers, more real and real virtual realities, we really kind of start, kind of start blending reality and, and virtual things together. Right? So, so um, I don't know if you, well, I don't know if you watch uh, Rick and Morty. You know, so they had a very interesting episode on simulation theory. And this theory proposed that we are actually being simulated, right? And what that means is, we essentially we're kind of like playing a video game. You know how when you play a game, they're like frame per second. So essentially, what what you see is what you render. So basically, your reality only exists with the perspective that you see. So what that means is, when you let's say you play Minecraft. Right? You're looking at this place, and there's a big mountain. Wow, there's a great mountain. But if you look away, that mountain disappears. So in order to conserve computational power as a software developer, you wouldn't want to render what the player well, can't see at the back. right? And you can kind of apply that to our life. Like, you don't know if what you don't see behind you is actually real. What if right now you're wearing a really advanced, technologically, uh, advance like virtual reality in the future and maybe you're now just playing a game right that's really hard to it's really hard to know either if there's an exit button maybe death is the only option for you to exit this game and maybe you wake up from another place and you feel like oh okay i just finished playing another game but that's just a thought experiment and you might ask okay mark do you have like some correlations with like with some actual scientific evidence that is real obviously Anchor, Obviously, I don't, but I do have a, a, a correlation that I just thought of when I was like 2, 2 a.m. in the morning. I was just lying in my bed and I just feel like, huh, hmm, I read this topic about quantum mechanics. There's something called superposition. There's a theory called superposition principle. What that means is, imagine, well, in a nutshell, obviously, imagine you have a ball, right? It's a ball that has a number on it. and and whenever you look at the ball, let's say the first time you look at it, it's four, and you look away, and you look at it again, it's three. And then you it again, it changed the number. So what this means is that your observation has some sort of a physical effect on a physical object that you hold. And, and you might think this is fiction, but it's not. It's all these quantum mechanics that are actually proven to be real. And in fact, that's how we have quantum computers, why they're so fast. Because uh, things are all, they all have a, like a probabilistic distribution wave. So basically what that means in simple term is you don't know 
what it physically is until you look at it. And doesn't that sound quite similar to the idea that we're playing a game where things only start to be generating until you actually look at it? Right? So that is like a core, like a like a vague correlation that I found that can link well the quantum mechanics, like the actual physical proven theories, and this wild theory that people have proposed and I have thought of. So there, there are multiple hypotheses that I came up with. Obviously the first one and the most famous one is called ancestor simulation. So what is ancestor simulation, you ask? Ancestor simulation is essentially saying that we are living in a simulation where we are the product of future hum humanities. Maybe after billions of billions of years later, Earth got destroyed in multiple um, uh, like meteorites and nuclear war and the entire Earth got destroyed and future human race realized, hmm, I wonder what our ancestors look like. And, I, and we have enough computational power. Why don't we create a replica of our reality, right? Given input all of the mathematical and physical constants like pi and e and the big G and we create a perfectly virtual world of reality. And we, and that's the first hypothesis that um, that I think we could be in. And um, the next one is that quite literally, life could be a game. Maybe we're like like the very advanced version of Grand Theft Auto, where Grand Theft Auto is like one billion version, one billion. And may I get one of the stars from the And uh, we're like SimCity, right? So in that case, that means there could be people in our world that are NPCs, maybe I'm an NPC, maybe you're looking at me and I'm just a simulated non-player character in your game. It's like when you play a, like a role-playing game, they're just like random bots running around, maybe I'm one of them right now. Maybe you look around and how do you know, right? How do you know if everyone around you are real? You don't, quite, quite frankly, you don't know if anyone is real or even if yourself is real. And that's one possibility. And the next one, well, well, actually, we'll go back, what's well, it? Actually, um, and it, it, if you think I'm not convincing enough, maybe you think there's no way that what I see are fake. It's definitely real because I think that where I am. And maybe because it just seems so real to me, and so it must be real. So let me show you this clip that that, uh, that is released by Google recently in their Google I.O. They created this technology called Google Duplex where a computer, like an AI, tries to pretend to be a human and talk to a restaurant owner to make an, uh, a reservation. So this is, the left, the left side is the Google, so this person. Hi, um, I'd like to send a table for Wednesday the 7th. It's completely computer generated. Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, okay, it's nice. Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we need to like after like the five people, so people who can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? So, when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the 7th. Okay, it's the 7th. Okay, okay. Um, it's not too busy. This is the same time for okay? Oh, I gotcha. Thanks. See how it has the very natural sounding like ums, the pauses that we naturally make, and it is able to adapt to the situation where, oh, what if you can't, you can't reserve and you can just come, right? So, honestly, this kind of scared me that day. I was watching it, I was like, holy damn, this sounds more real than me. And how do I know one day if like a scammer calls me and I feel like it's actual a real person? I, I wouldn't know that, right? That is a big concern. And, but if you apply to, to our case, what if people that are talking to you are using the same technology that's in the future? So the last case obviously is that we're real, that things that we observe around us, we're, we're, all real, we're, the, we're, to be, we're very fortunate to be the only real genuine humanity to be ever existed in this universe. But I do feel like this is very unlikely. Why? Because if, you, if I'm able to create a simulation, that simulation will try to create another simulation, and that simulation will create more simulation, and this is just like infinite, infinitely nested amount of simulations that will just go forever. So which one is more likely? 
one single genuine reality or a near infinite amount of simulated reality? Well, statistically speaking, the latter one, right? So, just to end this off, I hope today I gave you a new perspective as to how you see the world around you. And uh, it's still from Zhuangzi, and uh, I'll read it for you. So, only after the great awakening will, be, will we realize that this is the great dream, and yet fools think they are awake, presuming to know that they are rulers or herdsmen, how dense. So while well, this guy asked, well, he said this quote 300 BC, before he even knew that computers are coming up, before he even see virtual realities. So this just shows how um, simulation theory is not a, a concept, it's not, a, not even a modern concept, it's a concept that we, have, we as humanity have thought thousands of years ago, and it is something that I feel like is an idea worth spreading. Thank you.